This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast brought to you by the Deluxe Edition Network with the podcast of the month, Spoil My Movie, and World's True Crime. And also, if you're looking for more podcasts from the network, just go to deluxeeditionnetwork.com where you'll find all sorts of podcasts that fit your needs. Or if you love listening to multiple podcasts, there you go. So, today I'm talking about a movie that I started like a few, god, months ago, originally called Walking Tall. It was about a one man's crusade to end corruption in his town, Buford Pusser. Everyone knows about him. Well, we're going to talk today about part two, which is called... Walking Tall Part 2. Walking Tall Part 2 is a 1975 sequel to the crime-slash-action film Walking Tall. Walking Tall Part 2 was directed by Earl Bellamy and produced by Charles A. Pratt. The film stars Bo Svensson as Buford Pusser, replacing Joe Don Baker, who played Pusser in the first Walking Tall film. The on-screen title of the film is Part 2 Walking Tall, The Legend of Buford Pusser. The film was followed in 1977 by Walking Tall, Final Chapter, also starring Svensson. Plot. Sheriff Buford Pusser continues his one-man war against moonshiners and a ruthless crime syndicate after the murder of his wife in late 1960s Tennessee. So, what that means is we got a new guy at the helm of playing the character Buford Pusser. A um, little bit of trivia here. After Joe Don Baker, who played Pusser in the first Walking Tall film in this trilogy, declined it because Buford Pusser himself was going to play himself in this movie. Well, as things go, he had a car accident, which he passed away from. Um, his daughter and mother always felt like it wasn't truly an accident. Maybe the people that he tried to get rid of and put them behind bars got after him. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that it, it Walking Tall Part 2 continues what Buford's message was. And a lot of people are like, what, violence? No. He had to fight against these moonshiners and a ruthless crime syndicate that had tried to kill him, and they killed his wife in the killed his wife in the first movie. Um, it, it if you haven't seen this one yet, if you haven't seen the whole trilogy of the original Walking Tall movies, you're missing out. Um, Walking Tall Part One is probably the best. Um, and the other two aren't bad. They, they, they stand up. Um, and one of Buford's, uh, quotes here, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to be sure you finish telling my story. And with him passing away before this movie came out or before the movie was even made, um, it, it it probably would have been different. But at the same time, Bo Svensson is no joke in this. He is he is a great actor. Um, I thought it was kind of weird because I don't know the height difference from Joe Don Baker to Bo Svensson, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty big. Maybe a little bit or maybe even a big difference. Um, and... 
I always, when I first watched Bo Swenson in this movie, I always thought of him like in Beyond the Law with Charlie Sheen, where he did something else and then got into this movie. And it's like, you know, you'd think he's a football player at first, but it's still a great movie. They put in a lot of obstacles in his way. They put in, you know, that he's trying to find and put away all the killers that had something to do with his wife's assassination attempt. He's, you know, he's trying his damnedest to keep everyone safe. And one thing that always shocked me in these movies, which they would do in a lot of other revenge type movies, was that they never targeted his family other than when his wife was in the car, even though she wasn't supposed to be there, she was still in the car and she got shot, killed pretty much. I think she got shot in the head in the first one. Um, I mean, you have Buford who in the beginning of the movie is still healing from having his jaw shot off when his wife got assassinated um and his dad and a few other townsfolk and even his deputies are talking about you know hey should Buford keep going but then like uh Grady Deputy Grady says that it's gonna be a job he wants to finish himself and unless Buford told Grady hey I want you to run for sheriff then he Grady wanted no part of it because he knew Buford wanted these people that had broken his family and murdered his wife. And then, of course, you get the bad guys. The bad guys in this are typical of the 70s. Um, they are kind of at one point aloof, as some would say. But other than that, they're, it's a really good movie. You, uh, the, the first time that he ever comes back and goes back on duty, um, Buford has to arrest a guy by the name of Steamer Riley. Well, Steamer breaks Buford's, um, stick that he usually carries, his bat type weapon. And it's really funny because after that, it's kind of like, oh, shit, what is he going to do now? So then he has to, he, he shoots um, Steamer, but yet it's not like a kill shot. It's a wound. And so then he later arrests him. But because Grady and Obra here on the radio call from Buford saying hey I need an ambulance down here they think Buford's been shot so they call uh Obra calls everyone in and you know all the fun stuff ensues when he comes back comes when the all the other cops and all that finally get to where Buford and the steamer Riley are <laughs> he says are you hurt and uh, Buford's like a little bit, but not for you to call out the whole county. And Obra thinks that Steamer was paid to set Buford up, and it wasn't a setup. It was just, you know, Steamer had too much to drink. And then you also see a little bit of him and how his family are, is affected by what had happened to his wife. Um, the kids, you know, they're, they're growing up a little bit and at the same time, he's trying to be a great father and a widow at the same time. So it's like, you know, and then of course you get the good old fashioned, um, I like to say it's jail. She's pretty much jail bait. If you think about it, um, Ruby Ann and Margan Stilson both the same character, just played by different actresses. Um, it, it's funny because, so, 
to set it up, and I'm I'm trying not to spoil this movie if you haven't seen it, but she comes in. Well, she's hired by the same syndicate that wants Buford out of power. Okay. And she's flirting with him, you know, all this stuff. Well, finally, when he goes to take her out somewhere, she's like, well, hey, can we stop at this cabin? I forgot the map there. He already knows that she's full of shit. And by that time, you know, he uh, he sees some people out on the water waiting for a sign from her to shoot him. Well, he grabs her, tells, and grabs a megaphone, tells them, hey, you know, if you're ever in McNary County again, we'd love to talk to you. And so then she knows the jigs up on that. And then another bad guy in this movie called uh, Stud Pardee, who is a race car driver who also runs Moonshine, he uh, he ends up unscrewing a few of the lug nuts off of one of Buford's tires and has Buford chase him. Well, when Buford tries and slows down to make a turn the tire comes off and he slides off in the ditch and um it just the back and forth between obra and grady is just it's funnier than hell um you see sheriff tanner again played by the legendary red west he's in here um noah beery jr plays carl pusser in this one and then also you have Pinky Dobson, who Pinky Dobson, he, he, he does gambling and moonshining. He later gets injured in a boating accident, which is actually really funny because if he... So, again, not trying to spoil this if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen the movie yet, go watch the movies, then come listen to this review, if you can call it a review. But anyway... So, Pinky Dobson is driving in his boat, and Buford has, and his pa and a few people have set up a, it's kind of like a log roadblock in a way on the water. So, Pinky Dobson hits it, falls out of his own boat, and Buford goes, picks him up. Well, then we see him in the hospital, and here comes... Ruby Ann slash Marg Ann Stilson again. She has around her waist some rope so that he can climb out of the hospital and they can get away. Well, Buford, he comes back and so he, uh, he goes back in there to see and she's gone. He's gone. So they have to go find him. Well, when they finally catch up with uh, Pinky Dobson and Ruby Ann slash Margan Stilson, there's a shootout, and then there's the car chase. Well, Buford shoots him in the... I think he shoots him in the lower back. And so he stops, and then uh, Ruby Ann slash Margan Stilson tells him about where Ray Henry, one of, supposedly one of the assassins in the car that was meant for Buford in part one, but ended up shooting his wife um we you don't find out if it was ray henry that delivered the fatal bullet to his wife but he was supposedly part of the ambush is what we're told and so then buford is told where ray henry is and then he goes to this little must be like a boarding house or something tells all the cops not to shoot and then him and Grady, because Obra dies. Obra ends up dying. Um, they screwed up Buford's car while Obra was like, hey, I'll go pick up your new car. Let me drive this. Well, Obra is driving a little bit too fast, and he tries to hit the brakes and nothing. So they, they sawed the pin on the on the steering wheel, and also cut the brakes. And Obra gets killed because he runs head-on into um, a delivery vehicle, I think it was. And 
and or delivery truck and Buford takes it really hard so then finally near the end of the movie when he's dealing with Ray Henry he tells him okay throw your gun out no one's gonna shoot and then Buford when he goes to try and arrest Ray Henry Ray Henry had another gun in the room so as soon as Buford kicks open the door Ray Henry shoots him in the leg I do believe upper leg but Buford gets the kill shots on Ray Henry and that they they pretty much show Buford and Grady getting into a ambulance at the end of the movie and then the credits roll well then you find the police report of Buford Pusser's death in the end of the movie and it's discussed a little bit by the narrator um and now you find out that Pusser's death would be further elaborated in the next sequel walking tall the final chapter um like i say these are great movies each one kind of tells its own story i would say but if you haven't seen the original walking tall trilogy you need to um and i'm not just saying that because of you know it's one of my favorites i'm saying it because it is that good they were good movies back then a little bit of bullshit here and there were sprinkled in you could you can tell um but yeah buford and walking tall part two does not hold back um I think next Thursday I will talk about Walking Tall, the final chapter. I know next Tuesday, next Tuesday I'm going to bring back the history of the Dallas Cowboys, the 90s, where they come back from mediocrity in the late 80s to win three Super Bowls. And then next Thursday I will talk about Walking Tall, final chapter. Well, Thank you so very much for joining me on this lovely day. Well, unless you're in Minnesota, then, I'm, you know, we're still dealing with the aftermath from all the other crap. But hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Also, remember, if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and comment. Also, hit that notification bell so that you never miss another minute of the podcast. And also, if you love the podcast please go over to the Deluxe Edition Network at deluxeeditionnetwork.com and follow some other podcasts. There's a podcast for everyone in the network, and I think you'll love it. Thank you so very much, and I will talk to you all later. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com.